So let's get to the top of the draft. No quarterbacks this year that we think are worthy. There's no that mm -hmm. number one overall guy that you see almost every year. So consequently, you get into this discussion of who's going to go number one. And it, when quarterbacks don't go number one, we default to edge rushers and offensive tackles. And for most of this, it felt like Aiden Hutchinson was pretty much locked in as number one overall. I've now seen a second, like, big media, quote unquote, mock draft that puts Trayvon Walker number one overall. Can you make any sense out of this madness for me? No, I, I can't. I truly can't, <laughs> honestly, because, yes, it's about projection. Yes, it's about what guys could become. And, and that's great. And, and Trayvon Walker could be elite in five years. I, I'm not saying he won't be. I'm saying I know Aiden Hutchinson is good right now. And I'm also saying I know Aiden Hutchinson is an elite athlete for the edge rushing position. That's the thing that makes no sense to me, right? I can kind of see an argument to put Trayvon Walker ahead of a bunch of people that were more productive than yeah. him, right? Whether it's Jermaine Johnson, whether it's Carl Loftus, whoever it is, right? There's a lot of people that I will at least entertain the argument that this guy is such a freaky athlete, mm -hmm. you can forgive a lot and put him above in terms of projection. Yeah. I can even kind of see that argument for Thibodeau based more off the where there's smoke, there's fire, off field stuff, motivation, whatever it is. I don't know if that's true or not, but if it is, I can get why you would do that, yeah. right? Um, there is, I just don't even see the argument to put him over Hutchinson because it's not like Hutchinson's a bad athlete. Yeah. Hutchinson is a freaky athlete as well. It boils down to one guy's got long arms and the other guy doesn't, yes. which seems like insane reason to say, well, okay, none of that production that he had in college is going to translate to the next level because his arms are a bit shorter than you want. Yeah, Aiden Hutchinson is a better athlete than the Bosa brothers. Right. Right? You know, like guys who went two and three uh, and were considered, you know, elite prospects in the can't miss ish tier. Hutchinson's a better athlete than those guys. It, so, yeah, it, an, almost an inch shorter arms than both of those guys, sure, but big hands, and he's produced at a level that those guys didn't even produce at in college. So, and, and even though he's a senior, he is only, I believe, six months older than Trayvon Walker. So he is not that much right. like he's not 23 years old coming out he is uh still 21 i believe on draft day that's the it just that's the one that i can't understand why anybody would entertain that because yeah. not only are you projecting that hey he's going to be elite at some point you're, you're sort mm -hmm. of you're offsetting all of the production difference but you're also trying to do it against an athlete that's also elite it yeah. doesn't make any sense to me yeah. it feels like Hutchinson seems to recently be getting this thing that certainly Joey Bosa got. I don't yes, yeah, Bo Bosa. Joey was kind of getting hated on for always oh, not top five pick tools. But I it, no, yeah, it, it was, was almost surprising like, when the Chargers drafted. Right, it was more like, well, he's maxed out. Like mm -hmm. this is as good as he's going to get. Yeah, like, but this is really good. Like <laughs> he's already a Pro Bowl caliber player. Yeah. If that's as good as he ever gets, that's still worth drafting him in the top five. What what is our problem here? Yeah, and it, when you're sort of looking at that draft, the problem is there was no freaky toolsy alternative to like go well what about this guy mm -hmm. like this guy may be maxed out over here as a pro bowler but over here we have this guy who's got all pro level vertical jump and you know three cone and well there was none of those guys right it would be like it would have involved inflating like yannick and gakwe from like the middle of the second round up to that kind of level but because you have a trayvon walker it feels like that's just where the the deflection is going we're, we're getting bored with hutchinson because we're we just talked about how good he is and how clean as a prospect he is. And all we can do is sort of say, yeah, but 32 inch arms. Yeah. So all the sort of the deflected attention is now going to Trayvon Walker, who has the freaky tools and blew up the combine. And we can at least sort of look at the Georgia tape and go, yeah, well, he wasn't always played on the edge. And there are reasons that his production wasn't as good as you think. So let's just say that this guy is superstar. Yeah. I, I, I will say the only reason I could think of if, if like put me in in Trent Baalke's shoes. Now, Trent Baalke trying to get inside his mind, not something I'm going to attempt to do. But just put me as a Jaguars GM. Why would I? Why would there be smoke? Why would I allow smoke for Trayvon Walker to be number one overall? I need more picks. I have a bad roster. Yeah. Uh, number one overall pick, paying an edge rusher. Yeah, I think Aiden Hutchinson's a great prospect, but one Aiden Hutchinson doesn't turn me into anything overnight. I, I need wide receivers for Trevor Lawrence. I need offensive help too. So I might not even, and I just drafted an edge rusher two years ago in the first round three years ago in the first round, too, or was it four years ago? Whatever. Josh Allen and uh, uh, the LSU guy whose name's Caleb Chason. Right? Caleb Chason. You have a couple guys installed. Maybe you don't even want edge. So that could be the only thing I'm thinking of is trying to induce a trade to number one overall, saying, oh, you know, we're really high on this guy. Maybe, oh, if you want Aiden Hutchinson, come and get him, is the only thing I can think of. But 
But doesn't that work if you just like pick up the phone? <laughs> like, couldn't you just call every other team or, you know, I don't know how those things work, but put the feelers out and be yeah. like, hey, we'd be willing to move off this pick mm-hmm. for this guy. Yeah, we right? really like we Trayvon. Like, yeah, we like both these guys. If you want to make an offer, we're listening. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't understand why you would need to do that in sort of cloak and dagger, you know, media smokescreen stuff. Like, just tell everybody. I'm trying to make sense of it here, Sam. I, I <laughs> no, no clue. I, the, th- the funny thing is, like, you put on this tape, and it's like, there are, one thing I will say is that it, there's something to the idea that that Georgia defense didn't put him in, you know, it, it, he didn't yeah. have the same role yes, as those yes, other yes, guys, yes. right? And that definitely didn't help him get the kind of pass rushing production that other players have gotten this draft Mm -hmm. on the other hand it doesn't get you all the way there like you can carve it down and find subset of plays where he isn't playing the run first and he isn't setting a hard edge and he isn't lined up Mm -hmm. inside the tackle and all these kinds of things and he is legitimately just trying to rush around the edge and doesn't just doesn't get there his his best highlights are legitimately in coverage yeah it's a pass breakup it's not not untrue he has a pass breakup or it's one's a pass breakup against florida one's covering a wheel route against um was it auburn and then one is actually chasing down bryce young i believe in the was it the sc championship game or the maybe national championship game one of those two those are his highlights they are not come beating offensive linemen one-on-one even rashawn gary who's gotten who's gotten comp to because rashawn gary was this size speed freak athlete with long arms that you projected to the edge rashawn gary had reps where it was like oh wow that was it. You know, a bull, he had like a bull rush against a Nebraska tackle. That was just jaw dropping. That's like, oh, if he could do this every time, he would win. I haven't seen those Trayvon Walk. Those don't, those haven't happened. I've have rarely seen a player. So, you know, PFF Ultimate, there's all kinds of ways of like chopping up the tape and getting kind of quick access to various things. And one of the ways it's generally not a good way of watching players because you just see the good plays <laughs> yeah. is using, you know, like you pressures really or key plays or whatever it is, right? You dial up those. I can't remember a like a high end prospect whose like impressive play reel is so yeah. unimpressive. Yeah. Usually you dial up those guys and you're like, oh, this guy's a superstar. And then you watch the bad and you're like, okay, wait, wait, dial it back. I yeah. I jumped the gun there. But you put up his plays and it's not I, I'm not even excited by them. Well, if this is like half of his pressures come from him legitimately playing the run first and then like converting it to just long arming and trying to drive a guy back into the quarterback. Like, well, this is fine, but like, where there's no pressure. Yeah. I, I think um, Austin Gale put this well on Tailgate the other day. He said, once you reach kind of the elite tier of athlete, separating in that tier, you're you're doing it wrong like there's there's no real higher end once you get to you know Trayvon Walker's level of tools versus you know Aiden Hutchinson's or Kayvon Thibodeau's or some of the other guys in this class that are you know in that elite tier of athlete it doesn't give him a higher ceiling than these other guys right. you know it just says that he can test better than those other guys so there's also, it, like, big other ignores, aspects of the game than just it ignores so many of these guys that were incredible athletes and not good football players mm-hmm. like it's not like we haven't seen somebody with freaky workout numbers before come yeah. along and bomb out of the NFL. Like th- some people are literally making this argument like, oh, if you test this good, you can't, you can't be bad. Like yeah. you can't fail. There's no way. Yeah. But we've seen it a yeah. lot. Like it's happened quite a bit. Yeah. And Ben Stockwell made this point to me yesterday or whatever. It's like, you know, if Danell Hunter's another guy who's getting calm to a lot in terms mm-hmm. of freaky athlete, has the tools, the size. Okay, he's got 20 pounds on Hunter, but and Hunter was another guy who just didn't have the pressure, the college production. But he's become a great NFL player. So that's a guy a lot of people are holding up and saying, yeah. Walker's the next Denel yeah. Hunter. But Denel Hunter went in the third round. Mm-hmm. Like we're not, that wasn't the guy anybody was talking about as the number one overall pick. Yeah. And even Rashawn Gary, he wasn't a top 10 pick. Like That's the range I see I would draft Trayvon Walker. Right. Is, you know, late teens. When, not to say there's can't miss guys at the top of the draft, but you can draft guys who are – Productive on a football field, elite athletes with elite tools to project the NFL. It's like you want all of the boxes ticked, right? Exactly. So you can tick half of the boxes with Trayvon Walker and project the other half, mm-hmm. or you can take a guy like Aiden Hutchinson who ticks all the boxes. Yeah. Like, I, I literally don't understand the argument that would take the guy with half the boxes missing yeah. and project that you're going to tick the other boxes later on down the line. 